kid. <laughs> Greetings, my beautiful, wonderful, special roommate best friends. Yeah, what's up, Gerald? I was just catching up on the latest Broadway buzz on DontPopTheHeadCassie.com and I saw that there's gonna be a new Broadway musical all about Marilyn Monroe. I wonder what that show would be like. Surely the casting process would be fascinating. And every girl in New York City will want to play Marilyn Monroe. Will she be an established star? A girl working her way from the chorus? Or a complete unknown fresh off the bus from Iowa? Wouldn't that be exciting and thrilling to watch? I think it would be a smash. <sighs> Stealing Focus! Over here! Greetings, Broadway babies. I'm Emily. Yeah, and I'm Trip. And welcome to Stealing Focus. The show where we teach Gerald here. Hello. All about TV and movie musicals, comparing them to their source material. Rating them on their own merits. To determine once and for all whether or not they live up to our lofty expectations as true aficionados of the Great White Way. In other words, we're going to be deciding which moments are a standing O, yes, a slow clap, Meh. or carry the musical. Uh. Boo! Uh, boo. Uh, yes, you could say it that way, but I think I was pretty succinct when okay, I was talking Okay, but what does this have to do with Bombshell, the Marilyn Monroe musical? Well, Gerald, let's talk about Smash. Smash was an NBC drama that premiered in February 2012, created by playwright Teresa Rebic and executive produced by Steven Spielberg. Smash is the story of Ivy Lynn and Karen Cartwright and their struggles to star in a Broadway musical. Along the way, they get fawned over by Uma Thurman, serenaded by Bernadette Peters, and drowned by Angelica Houston. There was a lot of anticipation leading up to Smash. Those of us a little too old for Glee were excited to have a TV show that accurately depicted the experience of producing, directing, and performing in a brand new Broadway musical. The pilot was extremely promising, and musical theater nerds across the country were eating it up like it was Schmackery's cookies. Unfortunately, after the pilot, it was all downhill for Smash. Ratings sagged, drama geeks started hate-watching, and the show was canceled after two seasons. But is it really as bad as everyone says? After all, Marilyn Monroe musical. It's god-awful. I like it. Jeremy Jordan is... Well, let's take a look, shall we? This is Smash. As we said before, the pilot for Smash was quite promising. We were introduced to our leads, Karen Cartwright, Ivy Lynn, Tom and Julia, Angelica, oh my god, what is she doing here, Houston. There's a Broadway-sized villain, a handsome director, and an amazingly staged production number. The pilot also ended with the song, Let Me Be Your Star, which we all downloaded the second the episode was over. Don't deny it. When you hear those opening, twinkling notes, you can't help but sing along. Emily, don't be ridiculous. I'm not some sniveling fangirl locked in my bedroom singing my heart out to every Broadway show tune that comes on. Feeding on a girl with a hunger for fame and, and a face and a name, name to remember. The music for Bombshell is old-fashioned Broadway spectacle, and it's glorious. Written by Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, the songs are catchy, fun, moving, heartfelt, funny, thrilling, and everything in between. Every time they do a number from Bombshell, I can't help but smile and watch intently. And the second season? The second season chose to bring another show into the mix, Hit List. This musical had the off-Broadway, rags-to-riches, Jonathan Larson rent-style journey to Broadway. The musical is all pop rock, written by multiple up-and-coming musical theater composers like Joe Iconis, Pasek and Paul, Andrew McMahon, Lucy Silvis, and Drew Gasparini. It's the grassroots, word-of-mouth musical theater experience, as opposed to the big money, big stars appealing to the tourists' experience. What's going on? You're all leaving?
It's not a bad comparison to make. Both styles are common in how a new work gets to Broadway. No, it is TV, so the timeline's a little far-fetched. Hitless went to Broadway in less than one season? Yeah, see, usually there are readings, workshops, test runs, and years of developing word of mouth before a new work can get to Broadway. And that doesn't enrage the Broadway fangirl in you? <sighs> well, like you said, TV. <laughs> <laughs> Still, for the masses of middle Americans unfamiliar with the theatrical process, it's a good microcosm and a simple, albeit truncated, device for showing exactly what goes on into developing any new work. That's right. Songs change, showmances occur, creative differences arise, song lyrics are changed using note cards on a bulletin board. But is that... Really, how Broadway composers write musicals? You'll see, the songs outside of Bombshell and Hit List were hit or miss. The biggest problem with the first season of Smash is when it tried to glee it up. It would stop the story entirely, stop the character arc, and then just give us a song. There would be no point to any of those songs. And oftentimes it just sounded like they were singing to a karaoke track. In fact, sometimes the characters were just singing at a karaoke bar. <laughs> that being said, not all of these musical numbers were hopeless. I'm particularly fond of the cast rendition of Under Pressure in the final episode of season two. It's the night of the Tony Awards and every single character is, well, under pressure. And I kind of like that each character, even the ones who can't really sing, get a moment to shine. There's also Christian Borle and Leslie Odom Jr. singing Another Openin' Another Show in episode 13, setting up Bombshell's out-of-town tryout in the anticipation of mounting a new production. Which brings us to the cast. It's great. It has everything from legitimate Broadway stars to everyday New York actors and Academy Award winners. Uh, there are Tony Award winners like Christian Borle and Norbert Leo Butts and Bernadette Peters singing Everything's Coming Up Roses, oh my god. Angelica Houston, Jennifer Hudson, Uma Thurman, Deborah Messing and Sean Hayes are there. What? That's half of Will and Grace! <laughs> no. Deborah Messing and Christian Borle have a particularly great chemistry as Tom and Julia, the writing team behind Bombshell. Any scene these two have together is a highlight, probably because many of them feel like they were cut and pasted directly from Will and Grace. I'm also a big fan of Jack Davenport as Derek Wills, the uh, brutal director-choreographer genius who's a perv, but a genius, but a jerk. These directors exist, you guys. Oh, and the cameos. Harvey Firestein, Seth Rudetsky, Rosie O'Donnell, Lindsay Mendez, Liza! Not to mention all the Broadway actors any box stepper worth their weight in dance belts would know. We got Terrence Mann, Ann Harada, Andy Mientis, Will Chase, Jesse L. Martin, Daphne Rubin Vega, Leslie Odom Jr., Krista Rodriguez, Mark Kudish, and. Uh, who's Jeremy Jordan? Woo! MG! You guys, Jeremy Jordan is the best! He's the songwriter for Hit List, and he's a bad boy with a troubled past. But when he sings, the angels appear, and no one can resist his talent or his chops. But he's still grumpy, brooding, and he just needs someone to believe in him and take him away where there's space and fresh air. Let him laugh in my face, I don't care! <laughs> yes, the actors are great, and doing their best they can with the material. But wait! You forgot about our two leads, the most important characters of the show, Ivy Lynn and Karen Cartwright. Yes, and that leads us to... Broadway diva Megan Hilty plays Ivy Lynn, born into musical theater royalty and desperately trying to climb her way out of the chorus. And American Idol's own Catherine McPhee is Karen Cartwright, a girl straight off the bus from somewhere in the Midwest. Ivy has known Tom and Julia for years and is a shoe in for Marilyn, but suddenly, everyone finds themselves drawn to Karen. Oh, so Karen is our Peggy Sawyer, our Eve Harrington. Uh, well, sort of. Uh, let me ask you, Gerald. Who do you see as Marilyn? Her or her? Aw, uh, stop teasing me, you guys. Obviously, it's the one who looks and sounds like Marilyn, Miss Ivy Lynn. But that's the problem with the whole show. We're supposed to believe that these two are rivals. It's not that Karen isn't any good. Far from it. We just are supposed to see her as Marilyn when we've got Megan Hilty the entire time. They're different types. They're completely different types. It's Miss Adelaide versus Sarah Brown. It, it, it's Maria Von Trapp versus 
Mimi from Rent. In no universe would these two ever be up for the same role. They look completely different. They sound completely different. There's Hilti with her Broadway melodies, and there's McPhee with her pop tunes. The whispery little pop boys. I, we never believe that they're ever going to be up for the same role. And may I also mention that Ivy Lynn is a Broadway veteran with 10 years of experience in the chorus. She's earned the role, but no, 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 no. Everyone sees Karen as Marilyn. Derek's all like, I see her. I see her oh, as Marilyn. Oh, which leads us to our next point. May we all bow our heads in prayer. Oh, yes. oh I didn't know you were doing this. I'm not really Our McPhee in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, our caring come, our cartwright done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You mean, Karen is Jesus!